Okay, so today we're going to look at a couple of the, uh, we call these intermediate cases for using partial fractions. Um, as I've said, the easy cases are the ones that come up all of the time in things like physics. Um, so if you, if you know those, uh, you could always look up how to do the harder cases as you need them. Um, the more frequent ones are the easy cases. So we're going to do a couple of moderate cases. Uh, so um, the first thing we want to look at is how to apply long division. Uh, to using partial fractions. So let me move into a problem with that. Okay. Um, first of all, there's a principle here. Uh, the principle is um, if the degree of the numerator is greater than or equal to the degree of the denominator, okay, uh, you will want to use division before doing partial fractions. So I'll just say um, use division. Now there are there may be any other approaches that work, but using divisions uh, using division will set up the partial fraction problem. So let me give you an example, example one. So this is an example where we're actually going to have several approaches we could use besides long division, and we'll see that they all lead to the same result, um, but it's a good one um, to start with. And we'll, we'll affirm that long division does work. So here's a case where the degree of the numerator and denominator are the same. They're both degree one. We have to integrate with respect to y. Um, so we could do long division. All right, so what are we dividing? We're dividing um, y. Actually, let me create a little more space here. The dividend is y. That's the thing being divided. We're dividing by the divisor, y plus 2, to get a quotient. Um, now, clearly, this isn't going to divide evenly, and that's where the partial fractions come in. So we can write this as y plus zero. That might be more helpful when you set up the long division. You want to hold all of the places. And then you want to um, keep track of how many times y plus two will go into each of the terms. So y plus two will go into y once. So let's write y plus two. We're only worried about how many times really the leading y will go into y. It will go in exactly once. So then I put this in parentheses because we have to subtract that quantity from what's above. So we're left with negative 2. Um, and clearly, y plus 2 can't divide into negative 2 at all. So we can just go up to the top and say the remainder is negative 2. But what does that mean? That means um, in the context of this problem, we could rewrite that y over y plus 2 is equal to 1 minus 2 over y plus 2. All right, so then the key is we're supposed to integrate what's on the left, uh, the equal sign in the box, and we can rewrite it as what is on the right, and we'll be able to easily integrate that. Um, so in fact, let's do that right now. So if I had to integrate y over y plus 2, if I can rewrite that from what we just found with the division as the integral of 1 minus 2 over y plus 2, we could turn this into two separate integrals, but I think it's simple enough to realize the antiderivative of 1 would be y. And the antiderivative of 2 over y plus 2, we've seen that enough times now. Um, that will be 2 of ln of y plus 2. If you're not sure if that will work, just take the derivative of that term very quickly, um, and you will see that you end up with 2 divided by y plus 2. All right, and then we always tack on a plus C. So this is the result. Now, if you don't particularly like doing long division, I sort of try to avoid it um, when I can. Um, another way we could have uh, attained the same fractions is to realize that y, so this is sort of a method too, for those of you who are uh, long division averse, This could be written as y plus 2 minus 2 for the numerator over 
y plus 2. All right, and then you could break that into y plus 2 over y plus 2 minus 2 over y plus 2, and you see that the first fraction in those that pair is just 1 minus 2 over y plus 2. So I was able to avoid long division. All right, um, just an aside, if this had been, um, let's say, um, hmm, oh, mm -hmm, let me be careful here. Oh, yeah, so if this had been y over 2y plus 2, all right, um, I might want to rewrite that as, um, first of all, as y plus 1 minus 1 over 2y plus 2. And then I could say, oh, that is half of 2y plus 2 minus 1 over 2y plus 2. And I could keep on going with that. Um, so I could avoid long division, or maybe it would just be faster to do the long division um, if I had a case like that. Um, so anyhow, there are ways to rewrite things without going through the long division. Um, method three for this problem, though, would be th this one could use substitution methods. All right, so if I can use substitution rather than partial fractions, um, I will. And so I would let u equal y plus 2. All right, so du dy is 1, so du equals, whoops, I'll just write, equals dy. So if we look up here, I've taken care of the denominator. I've taken care of dy. Um, but the only problem is we won't cancel that y. So this was one of those I call them shifty substitution problems where we need to rewrite that y is equal to u minus 2. So if we do that, we can rewrite the problem as the integral of, um, what do we have, u minus 2 over u du, right? Then we can break that into two fractions, and we can see that that would be the same as u divided by u will be 1 minus 2 over u with respect to u, and that can easily be determined to be um, antiderivative would be u minus 2 ln of absolute value of u plus a constant. And so um, then we have to substitute back in for u. So we would have to substitute in y plus 2 minus 2 ln of the absolute value of y plus 2 plus c. Now, first, you may think this is a different answer than what we have above. Okay, and what's different about this answer is there's a plus two here, all right? Um, and if we go to what was above, there wasn't a plus two in here, okay? But the key is if I have an arbitrary constant and I add two, um, it's still an arbitrary number because C could be anything. So adding two um, still allows C to be anything. So this answer does in fact um, combine if you just add the arbitrary 2 into the constant or group it with the constant, um, you will, in fact, end up with what we had before, y minus 2 ln of absolute value of y plus 2 plus c. There's no sense having two constants, one of them known and one of them unknown. Simply write it as a single unknown constant. Now, that's a relatively easy case. You could avoid doing long division. Now I want to look at a case where you must do long division. So this is example two. OK, so in this case, um, we're going to integrate using limits. So that's new. We'll throw in some limits. x cubed minus x squared minus 12x minus 1 all over x squared plus x minus 12, all right? Um, actually, we could avoid long division. I'll show you how in just a moment. Um, but in general, long division will work, right? So if I want to my, I write my divisor first, x squared plus x minus 12. I'm going to divide into the dividend. All 
All right, so there we have it. Um, and if I look at how many times x squared can go into x cubed, so I'm going to look at the first term of each of these, it will go in x times. So what do I write here? I write x times the divisor, so that would be x cubed minus x squared minus 12x, and we're going to subtract that quantity from what's above, and you can see that's zero, and we have a one left over. Um, now, clearly, uh, x squared plus x minus 12, the divisor, can't go into the negative 1, so that's our remainder. So that means we could rewrite this whole um, original fraction um, in a new form. We could rewrite it as x minus 1 over x squared plus x minus 12 and integrate with respect to x, which I forgot to write in here. So the original problem could be rewritten now in this form, uh, where we have two things where we might be able to um, figure out what the answer is. And so now we'll integrate from 0 to 2 x dx, right? And we'll break this into two integrals just to make our lives it's easier usually to have two simpler integrals rather than one more complicated one. And so the second integral will, we can see the denominator factors into x plus 4 and x minus 3. Ah, so the second integral, it's always the remainder um, that becomes a partial fraction problem. So the remainder can be set up as 1 over x plus 4 times x minus 3 should equal a over x plus 4 plus b over x minus 3. All right. Um, now, I'm going to pass over this because you've seen this a number of times. Um, if we multiply through by the um, divisor on the, the left, or, um, we end up with a equaling negative 1 7th and b equaling 1 7th, right? So that's after solving um, that partial fraction problem. And so we can put that back in to our integral, and we can rewrite this problem. We can bring this down. We have a little bit more room. We can rewrite this as the integral from 0 to 2 of x dx minus um, the integral, oh, we're going to have a first, so that's a negative, so we're subtracting a negative, so that becomes plus. I'll put the 1 7th in front of the integral, and that's 1 over x plus 4 with respect to x, and then the, we're subtracting the b over x minus 3, um, so it'll be subtracting a 1 7th, so when this is an integral from 0 to 2, Okay, so we have an integral from 0 to 2 of 1 over, um, this one will be x minus 3 with respect to x. So the a and b values, since they're constants, we drew them out front of the integrals. And now each and every one of these integrals has a very simple antiderivative, which you should know by now. So the first one is x squared over 2. I'm going to evaluate that at 0 and 2. The second one will leave the 1 7th out front. Um, hopefully, you realize that's ln of x plus 4 by now. And evaluate that at 0 and 2. And then we have to subtract 1 7th. And we will have times the natural log of absolute value of x minus 3. The absolute values are very important in this problem. If you look at the original limits, um, if you put in 0 and 2, we will generate negative values inside of here, so the absolute values matter. It is okay um, that we end up with negatives, because if you look at the original um, function that is given, all right, it does not have, it has zeros. Um, if you factor the denominator, it will have zeros at negative 4 and 3. So the limits 0 to 2 are in between where the vertical asymptotes would be uh, for that function, all right? Um, so 
um, if we look at the original integrand as a rational function, it does in fact have two vertical asymptotes. So it has vertical asymptotes where the, those factors, so it would be x equals negative four and x equals three. So the limits of integration are between vertical asymptotes. But one should always be careful of that. You can't integrate across an asymptote, um, but we're not going to. Um, but the negatives, uh, the absolute values will really matter here when we substitute in. So now subbing in, we end up with, the first term is quite easy. We end up with four over two, which is two minus zero. The second of a, whoops, a one seventh times the natural log of four plus two is six minus the natural log of zero plus four. So that would be four. And then we'll have minus one seventh again. And then we will have the natural log in parentheses, the natural log when you put in two, uh, you would have a negative one, but we take the absolute value of that, which is one minus the natural log when you substitute the zero, getting negative three in the absolute value sign. So that becomes the natural log of three. It's very important. You can't have natural logs of negative numbers. So those absolute values matter. Uh, now, you hopefully realize that this goes to zero, so we don't have to worry about that. Um, if we rewrite this answer now, the first quantity is two plus, let's factor out a one seven, and we'll have a natural log of six minus a natural log of four, and we factor out a one seventh, so that leaves a, because of the negative in front of the one seventh, that becomes plus the natural log of three. Now, hopefully you remember your rules of logarithms. If you have the log of A plus the log of B, it's the log of AB. If you have the log of A minus the log of B, it's the log of A divided by B. Now here we have three logarithms. So everything that gets added um, goes to the numerator when we combine um, the terms and everything that gets subtracted goes to the denominator. So this ends up giving us two is still two, but we have one seventh, the natural log of six times three. Those two things go to the numerator over four. So the final answer is two plus one seventh, the natural log of 18 fourths, which would be nine halves. So that is the answer. It's important that you remember your rules of logarithms um, as you do these problems because the logarithms come up everywhere. All right. So there are even more complicated problems. You can look at examples in the book, um, but those don't come up as uh, frequently when you're just uh, doing things like physics. So we will stop our investigation of partial fractions with these. So now you have a chance to do some homework. Actually, you have um, one more quick video that I'll show you on what to do if you have more than three unknown, more than two unknowns. So if you have an A, B, and a C, and then you should be able to do the homework problem.